Hey there, today I'm gonna to show you how you transform this room from this to this. Now let's take a look back at what the room used to look like. So here's our starting point and I'm really excited to share this renovation with you guys because I'm going to take this room from start to finish and show you all of the steps in between to get there. The room is a pretty blank slate and some things that I want to take note of is that there's really a lack of color. There's a lot of wood on the walls but it's all painted white. There also is a drop ceiling that I'd like to get rid of as well as these two windows that I'd like to draw the eye to a little bit more as it's the only source of natural light. Then we also have a large closet but it's pretty hard to access. The first step is clearing the place out, and to provide some context, this is the basement bedroom in our lake house and we plan to host guests here mostly, so we want to get as many heads in here as possible while still maintaining a cool design and having some functional storage as well. Alright, let's start taking out this ceiling. Let's go ahead and start tearing out all this wood. Once I had a big enough pile of wood, it was time to start denailing everything. This process took quite a toll on the forearms, but it was worth it to make sure I was able to reuse all of that wood, then it was back to pulling wood off the walls. The room started filling up pretty quickly so before I could remove the wood on the fourth and final wall I decided to start taking everything out to the garage. Mind you it's the dead of winter here in Chicago so I was trying to stay indoors as much as I can but it made the process a little bit tricky. And at this point I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to be using all of this wood but I knew I wanted to use it in some fashion because there's a ton of it and it's all free. I definitely didn't want to use the white side that was already showing in the bedroom because as I mentioned earlier I did want to add a little bit of color to the room and the opposite side of the wood that was against the wall is pretty dirty and looks pretty grimy as well so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do here so while I mull that over let's get back to work I was all done but they actually left us two more pieces up here. Now we have enough. <laughs> Once all of the wood was off the walls, I decided to take down the remaining structure of the closet, and to do this I just used a reciprocating saw and it came out pretty easily. But now we have to figure out how we're going to be cleaning up all of this wood. And that's where this comes into play. This is a planer and I've been wanting to buy this tool for a very long time, and now I finally have an excuse to buy one. Let's go ahead and set it up and then we can start planing. By the way, it's about 30 or 40 degrees outside, so that's why I'm all bundled up and we're gonna have to do all this in the driveway because it creates a lot of dust. Let's get to it. Hey, Future Grant here. Turns out the planer did not work out for me. I sent one board through and knew I had to return it. The feeding speed was so slow and each board needed so much material taken off that it would have taken weeks to finish. Ain't nobody got time for that. I was so frustrated that I didn't even get any footage of it, hence this whole bit. So while I take some time to figure out how I'm going to be using all of this wood, let's get to building the bed.
I make sure to cut off the factory end before cutting all my pieces to length to make sure everything is nice and square. I could then start marking out the joist locations on my two side plates, but today I had a building buddy, so I had to get some throws in first. Alright, now let's get to work. ready to start putting in our middle supports. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the two in the very center, then I'll do the two on the outside and then work our way in the middle. Let's get to it. The next step is to create the vertical supports that will support the bed frame. And I have a bunch of leftover two by fours here from the old closet wall. I think this will actually work perfectly to create those. All right, it's finally time to lift the frame into place. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think we can do it. Uh, if I need to make adjustments, I still can do that, but hopefully it's the right height the first time. three additional bed frame supports along the back wall and then I wanted to add some blocking up above the bed but it was a little tricky getting up there. I found this is the easiest way to get up. You might be wondering what that black pipe is and it's actually a septic line going to a septic tank just outside. There was previously a soffit in the old closet covering all of this up but I don't really like the look of soffits so instead I created a wall for a more clean look. Now it's time to build the walls that will create the nook for the bed down here. I brought the bed back in here to help me visualize the design and make sure I like how everything's gonna lay out and it's all good to go. So let's get to building. Once everything was locked together with a couple screws, I added a shelf on the back wall that will kind of also act as a headboard. I then added in some more blocking, and then next up was drywall. Drywall is pretty boring stuff, so I'll take a moment here to talk about the thought process of the design of the room. Originally, I was just going to do a queen or king bed in here, but it's a really big room and that would limit us to just hosting two guests maximum, potentially only one if they don't know each other. So then I thought about doing a bunk bed design, but that's not exactly the most adult type of bed, it's more geared toward kids. So then I'm like, hmm, what can I do here? And I decided on doing two twins up top that are geared more toward children. However, an adult could stay up there if they wanted to. And then down below, we have a nice queen size bed that you can sleep in comfortably without having to crawl up a ladder. I also really liked the idea of turning the queen bed down below 90 degrees so that it was perpendicular to the twin beds up top. And this made it feel still like a bunk bed, but there was a lot more room and you didn't feel so claustrophobic. And now that all the drywall's up, all the screws are mudded and the seams are taped, it's time to paint. I always get so stressed out when it's time to pick the paint color because it's such a large focal point of the room. I know I wanted to go with something off-white, however I've made the mistake in the past of going with something so close to white that it doesn't even look any different than pure white. So in this case I went with Neutral Ground by Sherwin-Williams and you can see here the difference between the white and the neutral ground and it actually has a bit of a yellow undertone to it and at first I thought it was too yellow but it was actually a strategic call and I'll show you a little bit later why. 
Next up was electrical, and I'm not a licensed electrician by any means, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but basically I added two switches next to the door. One is to control LEDs that are mounted inside of the bed, and one is to control four LED pancake lights in the ceiling. And these are my favorite lights. These replace cans that you might have in your home with a small, thin wafer LED, and as you can see here, you can change the color temperature from 2700 all the way up to 5000. With the new lights in, I could finally take out this old fluorescent bulb that was on its last legs. I then grabbed two sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood and measured and cut those to size and I used my new track saw for that and it made light work of it. I then I added some subfloor adhesive to the bottom and screwed it into place. Makes a nice little bed. I then repeated the process for the other side and I was actually able to put a screw up in the floor joist above to hold the plywood in place while I applied the subfloor adhesive. I then screwed it down just like the other one adding a ton of screws because I do not want this creaking over time. It is rock solid. Also makes a nice little bed. People, it is finally time we are putting up this wood and I solved the problem. I am so happy about this and the solution is actually a lot easier than I thought. So, the problem with this wood is that it was super grimy and honestly in the garage lighting it looked very gray and bluish and didn't really go with the vibe in the room. However, I realized that the garage light is close to 5000 Kelvin which is very blue and it kind of made the color of the wood look a little bit different. So, I made sure to use a paint that had a yellow undertone as I mentioned earlier. Also, with the lights in the ceiling, I decided to change those to the warmest setting, which is 2700K, and when I did that and brought the wood back into the room, to my surprise, it actually made the wood look a lot nicer and brought out all of those yellows and oranges in the wood, and there wasn't really any blues or grays. And as you can see for yourself, I think it looks great and goes nicely with the rest of the color palette in the room. Now in regards to the dirtiness of the boards, I wasn't actually able to sand them because it completely got rid of all of that patina and cool looking color on the wood, so instead I just used kind of like a wet rag for certain areas that really needed it but honestly after looking through all the boards once again they weren't all that bad and the few ones that were bad I was able to toss to the side and just make do with what I had and I luckily had enough wood to go all the way around finally on the last piece all done well, not exactly. I was all done with the main part of the ceiling, which was honestly the hardest part. But now I'm adding that wood on the upper section and covering up the septic pipe as well as adding in some insulation. I also added in two double gang electrical boxes up there so that I could add an outlet and a switch for a light eventually. I then finished it off by adding wood across the ceiling up there, and this really makes it a cool effect because the wood wraps around the entire room going up one wall, across the ceiling, and then down the other. I luckily had just enough wood to completely clad the inside of the nook where the queen bed will go, and I also ran some electrical before doing so, that way each side of the bed has an outlet to plug a phone into. And now you can see that shelf that we roughed in earlier. Once that was complete, I ran some LEDs up top to illuminate the two twin beds. Now that we finally have all of the wood up in the room, it's time to start making the bed. Let's get to it. My most viewed video on this channel is the floating bed that I built for the upstairs bedroom, so I thought, why not build a second one down here, but make a few tweaks. That wire that you see there will power some LEDs that will underlight the bed, giving it that floating effect. The edges of the bed are made out of 2x8s, and I screw the two sides in directly into that nook using some really long lag bolts so it's super strong, and then the outside corners are reinforced with some Simpson strong tie 90 degree brackets. The front of the bed will be supported by this piece that I'm painting here, and I painted it on the front end because I didn't want to have to deal with painting around the carpet once it's installed. I installed two 2x4s on either side of the bed to support these slats that will support the mattress, and then I also installed installed a third one down the middle just to make this bed extra strong. For the slats, I used 1x4s and I spaced them roughly 5 inches apart. Once those were all in, I could bring in the mattress. It was a bit of a snug fit, but I eventually got it in place and then called it a day. next day I started trimming out the bed. I used some pre-primed one by material and brad nails to secure it, and then I filled in any of the seams and nail holes with Bondo. From there I primed the bed frame and then painted everything with iron ore from Sherwin-Williams. This also has some warm undertone so it's going to pair nicely with the neutral ground on the walls. Since I don't have a reading light within the nook, I decided to add some LEDs around the perimeter of the trim, and this will illuminate the space nicely if you do want to read a book or whatnot. And then as I mentioned before, I continued those LEDs around the perimeter of the bed frame giving it that floating look, and I made sure to use 2700K LEDs to match the lights in the ceiling. I installed two lights up top as well and this is so that if you are sleeping up here you don't have to climb all the way down the ladder to turn the lights on and off. And I'll make sure to link all of the products that I used throughout the video down in the description. And then I added some polyurethane on the plywood up there just to add some more durability but you probably won't ever see it. It was then time to start trimming out the windows. I 
I used a new technique here that worked really well. So that first part was just a square that went inside of the actual window frame, and then I glued up a second square that went on the outside, and then just using my eye, I made it nice and level, and then nailed the two pieces together. And now it's just basically a friction fit inside the window, so I could go ahead and just pull it out. Pretty nifty technique. And this works especially well for windows like these that are not perfectly square. There's a bit of angles, they're not all 90s, and rather than having to measure all those with an angle finder, you can just use this technique and you're gonna get a perfect fit every time. From there, I painted everything and also some of the baseboards that you'll see me install here shortly. And as you can see, these window trims just slide right in and you don't even really need to nail them, but I went ahead and nailed them anyway, just to be safe. I then installed the door casing and then the baseboards on either side of the room, and I painted these all the same iron ore to blend everything together. And this was actually my first time using a dark trim paint. I usually use white, but I really like how it looks and I'll probably use it in future projects. I then glued a small strip of wood around the perimeter of the nook and this will help to diffuse the LEDs so you're not blinded by it when you're sitting in bed. I added a small piece of trim up top to cover up that first row of screws that might be visible and also to cover the gap between the trim and the plywood. Then the mattresses arrived. I got these both from Costco and they were only about 180 bucks a piece, so it's a pretty good deal and they're really comfortable. All right, is there enough room to comfortably sleep? I'm six foot, 200 pounds. The mattress is actually really comfortable. I don't feel claustrophobic. You got a switch here for the light, outlet to charge your phone, and I can like sit up and not hit my head and like speak to the rest of the room or whatever. Getting out of bed can be a bit tricky. I'm gonna have to think about the ladder situation, but so far so good. The aesthetic of this home is modern industrial and I wanted to make sure that this room still embodied that, so I decided to use some gas plumbing pipe to make the ladder rungs. I screwed the rungs into one of the stringers and then using some heavy duty pipe clamps I pulled the other stringer nice and tight creating a friction fit and this worked actually really well. Keeping with this theme I decided to use the same gas pipe to create the safety rail for the twin beds up top. I made sure to put blocking underneath the three points where this connected to the bed that way I could use some really long screws and this can be used as a handrail for getting in and out of bed. I then added a few few finishing touches before starting on the doors that'll go on either side of the queen bed. I saved this one for last because honestly I was not looking forward to it. And the reason is because these two openings were meant to be square in the sense that each corner is 90 degrees, however in reality, they're not. So I had to come up with a pretty unique way on how to get perfectly flush doors. I started by building two doors that would mount directly to the hinges, however they were a lot smaller than the actual opening and weren't ever going to be seen in the final result. From there I glued a few small pieces of wood together to mark out the exact opening by pushing them flush up against each of the edges. You'll see this technique used a lot in backsplash installs as well as when installing large format tile in a shower pan. So now without using a tape measure or doing any calculations, I have a perfect template for the door opening. I then transfer the template onto an eighth inch sheet of hardboard and then ripped it right down the middle to create my two doors. I then wanted to create a little bit of visual intrigue on each of the doors and I really like the look of vertical shiplap, so I just set my saw depth to about a sixteenth of an inch and cut three grooves in each of the doors making sure that when the doors were closed, the seam down the middle looked like another groove. After applying a few coats of paint, I could install these panels by pin nailing them to the doors we installed earlier. And with that, we're done. Well, almost. It kind of defeats the purpose of having hidden doors when they don't line up perfectly, so I installed some magnets. I found these neodymium magnets online and I just installed them in two different 2x4s for each door. One of the 2x4s will be nailed to the door and one will be nailed to the trim, that way when it closes they'll lock together. And here you can see the magnets in action, as I close the door you'll see that the magnet kind of holds its position and locks it in place, and now that middle seam just looks like another groove and you don't even know that there's two doors there. Now I haven't really addressed it and you might be wondering what is the purpose of this space behind the bed and on the sides? It is to replace the closet that we tore down earlier and I could just put a rod in here and you can make it into a closet but we're going to actually be using it for long term storage such as Christmas decorations and whatnot. And then opposite the bed I built this industrial desk which does have some hanging storage as well as a few bins to put a few items that guests can use when staying in the room. And that's really all that they need. And if you want to see how I built this I posted that video just a few weeks back. And with that we are officially done with this bedroom renovation so now let's take a look back at what the room used to look like. So, 
What do you guys think? Perhaps you changed something about the design or you have a favorite part of the project? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And also subscribe if you wanna see more DIY renovations and room makeovers like this one. Also, all the tools that I use throughout this project are linked down in the description. I am really proud with how this project turned out and honestly, it's even better than I expected. I love that we were able to use all of the wood from the old room and make it look new again with this brand new design, even with that whole planner debacle. The LEDs really make the room pop and the decor ties the whole thing together. I also really like that the design of this room is fresh and new. However, it also ties into the rest of the home's aesthetic. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next time. Ugh.